Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Drew and this is the Just a Guy Linux YouTube channel. So about a week ago I was using the computer that stays in the kitchen on the, at the kitchen table for the most part and I was about to do an update when I something came over me and I thought to myself man I'm using Manjaro on this laptop and how dare I. So it was obvious since I use Debian everywhere else, you know, from my work computer to my test computer to my um, media player, to my media center and, and all kinds of stuff, that that laptop needed to be changed immediately. So I thought about just being really simple and installing like Linux Mint Debian Edition. Uh, but what's the fun in that when you are, you know, when you're doing YouTube videos on Debian? Uh, the one thing that I had to, well, two things. The, 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 you know, the first thing that I had to consider was the display. The display is a quad HD plus display. So it's a 13.3 inch that is 3200 by 1800. And so, yeah, you know, I also thought about MX Linux and, you know, like I said, Linux uh, Mint Debian edition, but that was, that was kind of brief because I wanted to have a few things in general and one was obviously the 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 display was a big issue but i also wanted to use butter fs and a uh, time shift for snapshots so the best way to do that is to figure out how to do that using debian and obviously the de the desktop environment was something that i had to consider not just with the display limitations but uh, this is kind of a community laptop, so my wife uses it as well, and it has to be something that is easy for her as a primarily Windows user. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install Debian testing on this particular machine with the Cinnamon desktop as well as beat, uh, ButterFS for the file system and snapshots and the reason why I was I picked Debian testing is because I did read an article recently on G Linux which is Google's in-house Linux distro, uh, distro that they you know that they have 100,000 users on and their you know that particular OS or that distro is using Debian testing as their base now they haven't released a whole lot of information about G Linux but I am kind of curious, so I kind of wanted a Debian testing base, Cinnamon desktop, as well as ButterFS and, um, and the uh, uh, time shift. So let's get started. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> so we're going to have to go to options here. And here's the expert install. Now this again, there's, there's going to be a lot of similarities here until we actually get to partitioning the disk drive. So we're going to pick English, the United States, and we're going to use the uh, tab key to go down to continue. I'm just going to go down one arrow key to configure the keyboard and select American English. Enter. Uh, detect. As you know, I don't edit my videos. So this could take quite a bit of time. I apologize in advance. All right, we're gonna just gonna blow through some of this stuff. And then obviously when we get to partitioning, then we're gonna have to slow down. So we're gonna detect the hardware. This is not a computer that uses Wi-Fi, so we're just gonna use the, uh, you know, the network connection, the wired connection. Okay. And the host name we're just going to use Jag Linux, which is just a guy Linux. And hit continue. 
Uh, we don't need a domain name, so we're just going to take that out. Again, this is where you would you want to make sure that you're enabling enable uh, shadow passwords here. Um, I always pick no here so that it sets up uh, sudo for my uh, user account. So no for this. And I'm going to put in my name and a password, and we're going to uh, set up the clock. Eastern time zone for me. And this is an SSD. So we're going to talk about that. This is going to be um, something that we have to do manually. And we are going to go down here to this drive, which is my, um, my SSD drive, and hit enter. And we're going to create a new and empty partition. And we're going to use GPT. And so we're going to go arrow down one, and we're going to create a new partition. And I think we're going to use 300 megabytes, M, OK? And hit beginning. Now we're going to go and use this as a EFI system partition. And we are done with that one, all right? Arrow down once more to this. We're going to create a new partition using all of the uh, of the size of the of the of the rest of the disk rather. Again, we're going to use this as the ButterFS journaling file system and hit OK. And we're done. And we're going to finish and write changes. Again, we're going to go, do you want to uh, go back? And the reason why is because we didn't set up a swap, which we will do later using ZRAM. So the answer is no here. And we're going to write those changes. OK? Now, here's where you stop. Do not go, <laughs> do not go to install the base system. Because what you need to do right now is if you're on metal, which is what I am, you're going to go control, control, alt, F2. OK, after you hit control, alt, F2, you're going to go and hit enter to get to the console. OK, um, now we're going to go DF dash H. And there you are. You can see um, SDA1 and SDA2. And those are the two um, those are the two that we're going to use, okay? So what we need to do initially is unmount those two drives because we have to reset them. So we have to go U mount and then target boot EFI, okay? And we're also going to U mount the target, which is SDA2. All right. Now let's look at this. OK. So you see the MNT directory. We're going to mount to the MNT directory. OK. So how do we accomplish this? We're going to mount dev, S, sorry, SDA to the space and then to the MNT. Okay. All right. Now let's CD into that mounted drive or to, yeah. And now we're going to uh, type ls. And you'll see that there is a, um, there's a subval called roof, root fs. Okay. And what we want to do is rename that to just the at symbol, OK? So what you have to do here is move the root fs, and we're going to just call it at, OK? So there you go. And now, like if I type ls, there you go. It's just it's been renamed, OK? So we're going to create 
a subvolume also called home. So we're going to say BTR FS subvolume and then create at home. Okay, great. So let's look at both of those. There's the at and then the at home. All right. So what we need to do is we are going to mount the target by typing in and we're going to set the we're going to set the um, the options for that particular subvolume. So we're going to say mount dash o and then no a time space cache and then compress equals ZSTD. Okay, now if you do not have a solid state drive, you probably can stop right there. Since this is an SSD, then we're going to type SSD and we're also going to add discard um, equals async. Okay, and we're also going to call this sub ball equals at, all right, space dev sda2 and then space slash target. Now that's a lot, so make sure that you're kind of like keeping up with the actual syntax and you're going to hit enter. All right. Now, we also need what we need to do is we need to create um, the target boot, boot EFI directory. So to do that, since we only have target, we're going to say mkdir and use the parent switch, and we're going to say target boot EFI. Okay. And now we're going to make directory um, and we're going to say um, slash target slash home. And that's going to be for our root, sub, root sub volume. Okay. Now, um, I wonder if control L works. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's just use this. So we're going to go up arrow key a couple times, three times. Okay. And what we need to do is we're going to change a couple things here. All right, we're obviously going to use subvol home, at home, all right? And we're going to uh, use SDA2, but we are going to add the target slash home directory, okay? I know that it's, I know that it wrapped, but uh, it, it, it'll be okay. Okay, so we need to we need to go ahead and remount that uh, SDA one. So we do that by saying mount dev SDA one, and we're going to mount that to that target slash boot slash EFI directory. Okay. All right. Now, if you are, an, let me go ahead and clear the screen. All right. Now, if you're an Arch user, you will say, why can't we just run G, uh, Gen FS tab here? It's because there is no Gen FS tab um, program for design for Debian. So you actually have to manually edit the FS tab. Um, so in order to do that, we need to CD into the target Etsy okay and let's tap LS and there's your FS tab okay so what we need to do is use nano to get to and go ahead and, and spell this out okay target Etsy FS tab okay go ahead and spell that whole thing out and hit enter okay 
Now you'll notice as you go down, the options have not changed. So there's, and it's only got one. It still is using that root FS sub volume. So what you need to do is you need to leave this whole thing and this, you know, as it is. But when you get to this defaults, okay, go ahead and remove that. And let's type in what we did before using the same options. No A time, okay, comma, space, underscore, cache. And then we're going to use the compress equals S ZSTD. I know this is hard to see, so I apologize, okay? And then we're going to say comma. Uh, again, this is only for SSD drives. We're going to add SSD. And we're also going to add um, discard equals async. And again, the root sub vol is just using the at symbol, okay? All right, let's go all the way back to the front of this. And we're going to um, use the control K. Now when you use control K, okay, it's gonna cut, look down here we're at the very bottom of the screen at the nano uh, commands. When you see control K, it's cut. So I'm gonna hit control K and notice that it's gone. So I'm going to hit control U twice now. Control U is to paste twice. One, two. All right, so that we don't have to like do the whole thing over again. All right, and now we're going to go over to this slash and we're going to put in um, home because this is the other sum volume. All right, and we all we have to do now is go to the thing where it says sub vol equals uh, at symbol and say home and that's that's all that we have to do for that line so let's go back and everything looks right and we can hit control O and enter and control X and that is it for for now okay so in order to get back so we're done setting up the partitions for um, for ButterFS, we haven't installed our uh, time shift stuff yet, but we will. And so what we need to do is hit Control Alt F1. Okay, Control Alt F1 gets you back into the um, into the install, and now we're going to install the base system. I was looking at the time, we're about 18 minutes in and we've got a little bit of ways to go. So I actually might have to do this in a couple different, um, in a couple different videos. <clears throat> so the base system um, is gonna be installed at root and then we're not going to install like a lot of stuff simply because we want to we want to we want to install most of the packages using the Debian, Debian testing um, servers. And we're going to just use this. Generic is good. Now again, this is a machine that only has Intel, an Intel processor, Intel GPU. So some of the other things that you might encounter might have um, might have some differences. Okay.
Let's configure. We're going to use the network mirror. We're going to use HTTP, which is fine. The United States is going to be good for me. And actually, I want to go up two arrows to, this is for me. This is not for you necessarily. But I live in the southeastern part of the United States. So the fastest mirror for me is right now Georgia Tech. So I'm going to use the Georgia Tech mirrors. And I'm going to use, I'm going to say yes to the non-free software. And I usually say no to this, but I am going to say yes uh, for now because I did encounter a couple things recently where I needed the sources. All right, again, we're going to remove these two because we're going to go to Debian testing anyway, and it makes no sense to use the security updates uh, and, and release updates. And we're just going to go continue here. We're going to go ahead and install software. No automatic. Uh, we're going to say no to the uh, usage survey. This task cell is something that I've been looking at. Um, we're, we're, we're definitely going to remove any options except for the standard utilities option. Okay. To see what packages get installed when you use the task uh, in the installation packages, just to see what the differences are. So. Uh, we might, I might actually end up using that later in the video. Okay, great, uh, and all we need to do is install Grub, and I think we're going to be good. And no. Nope. And finish. Great, now I'm going to go ahead and pull the, uh, the installation media out. And what, once it reboots, then we've got a few more things to, to do. Okay, so we're going to log in. And I am going to make, I know this is difficult on YouTube to see this, so what I need to do is sudo uh, dpkg and reconfigure and console hyphen setup. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna hit okay again, and I'm gonna go down to terminus, and I'm gonna go to the largest um, option. And there you go. Okay, so there we go. Okay, we're going to go to the um, sources list. So sudo nano uh, etsy apt sources list. Okay. Now, again, there's only going to be two things here, and we got to remove bullseye, and we're just going to add testing to where bullseye is. Okay. So let's accomplish that. And we're going to hit Control O, Enter, Control X, and let's hit Control L to get rid of that. OK. So let's update. And there are packages there. Now, let's go ahead and update everything. Um, yeah, let's do that. sudo apt update. 
You know what? Let me try something real quick. This is uh, I, this is not part of what I was planning on doing, but I want to say sudo apt install Nala. Nala is a really great front end for the for apt. It basically replaces apt. And one of the things that's really cool about Nala is and that it has over apt apt is that it runs parallel. And so you can you can download, I think the I think the default is three packages simultaneously, and apt only allows you to download one, uh, and then it moves on. It's still fast, but I just thought to myself, sudo, let's let's see if Nala will uh, speed up the process. sudo uh, Nala um, dist upgrade. Nala, I mean, it's just sudo apt, uh, sudo Nala upgrade. There we go. Wow. Okay, let's see how fast this is. It's pretty cool as far as colors and interface, and when you use the you know apt, then it's uh, um, it's very you know very plain. It works great, uh, but this is pretty interesting. I, I've been thinking about how to use Nala more efficiently and there might be an entire video. In fact, I've seen, I've seen two videos of, uh, I think um, Chris Titus did a video on Nala that I watched. I'm going to hit, by the way, I'm going to hit Q here. Okay. And I think actually DT from, uh, DT did a, a, a video on Nala as well. Okay, we're going to say yes. I don't know if this is saving any time at all, but it's it is kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool looking at the uh, this, the difference in terms of uh, display. So what we're doing obviously is going, you know, we're basically going from Debian 5.10 to whatever it is now, you know, Debian 5.18.3, I believe. I would have, I would have liked to have actually done a speed test of this to see, but. Twenty, almost twenty-nine minutes in. Okay, interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and reboot. sudo 
reboot. Oh, I guess I didn't spell that right. Pseudo reboot. Okay. All right, let's let's be okay. All right, we wanted to make sure that we had the right, you know, we had at home. Um, so let's go ahead and install sudo apt. Uh, let me, actually, let's use Nala. Nala uh, install a ZRAM tools. Okay, and let's um, sudo nano etsy a default zram swap. Okay, and we're going to uncomment the algo. We're going to remove that to and put in S zstd. And since this is a 32 gig uh, of RAM on this com this computer, we have we're going to have a 8 gig swap partition as soon as we uh, allow it to do 25 percent so we're going to say control O and control X all right now it's not going to it's not going to actually be um, have the same swap until we reboot again but let's let's just uh, let's go with it from now and we're going to sudo apt actually let's do it Nala uh, install and we're going to actually use task hyphen cinnamon and desktop. Now this might take a while. All right. So apologize for how long this will take, but it's going to, you know, there's 1.6 gigs to install. And um, there's going to be a lot of packages. So basically, this is how I set up my particular laptop. As I told you in the very beginning, you know, it installed quite a few packages, including GIMP, as well as um, some like Office type of software. And I was okay with that because, like I said, it's uh, it's a laptop that more than just me uses. Uh, so it needed some it needed some stuff on it. Okay, so um, if I do learn how to edit the video, then this will, is where I would say, okay, we're back from, uh, from when I cut the video and we're ready to, to move on after we've installed the Cinnamon desktop, okay? Um, let's say, let's do install one more thing. Let's go ahead and, and say sudo apt. I'm not going to use I'm going to use app this time just because time shift. And then we're done. So, let's sudo reboot. Okay. Now, most likely, uh, LightDM got installed. In fact, not most likely. LightDM got installed um, during that process. So we're going to go, and here's the LightDM, and we're going to log in using our username and password. And here is the... Um, hmm. Here is the Cinnamon desktop. This is weird. I logged that off. I don't want to use Wi Fi. Maybe it's picking up Wi Fi automatic. Figure.
let's just see. We're going to go over here, actually, and we're going to uh, see if Time Shift got installed, and it did. And we're going to go ahead and authenticate. And notice, let me go ahead and close this. ButterFS is installed, is, uh, sorry, Snapshot is correct. And we're going to uh, click on the SDA2, hit Next, and we want Daily. And we're saying Next, and Include, Next, and Finish. All right. So all we, you know, all we need to do is create a snapshot, and boom, it created the snapshot for us. And that is what we are looking for. So um, I don't know why this is the way it is, uh, but I know that time shift and whatever uh, we've done has been successful because we've been able to uh, create a snapshot using the ButterFS file system. So I will see you all next time and take care.